Hey guys, Brad Speed here. Look, um, I have another CRF250L video today. Um, now, uh, last week I got and installed an Olin's HO429 rear shock on the bike. Uh, and the, there's heaps of good install videos and good review videos uh, of this shock on YouTube. Um, geez, what a difference. Um, like, massive difference in the handling, um, you know, which everyone says. But this video is not about that. This video is in something that's a little bit ambiguous and confusing in the install instructions about how to adjust the shock. Now these are the booklets that the shock comes with, uh, really nice booklets. This one here gives you a good explanation of how to adjust the shock uh, and when and why you would adjust it, um, you know, to get your desired setting. This one here is like the install instructions. Um, and in the end of the install instructions, it wants you to reset the shock to the factory settings. Um, so we have three different settings of the spring preload. So that's this one here, um, like the, the tension uh, of the adjusters on the spring. Have the compression adjuster, which is on the external reservoir, which is this one here, still all muddy from the last ride. And then we have the rebound adjuster. Now, those settings are quite easy. This one here is the one that I stuffed up. Um, and it's because these instructions are a little bit ambiguous. Um, I even looked at the Olin's install video and it was also a little bit confusing. Um, now, I'll explain why. So, it wants you to reset them to the factory settings of 12 clicks for both the compression and rebound. Now, the rebound being the one that I had a little bit of trouble with. In the instructions here, it explains how to adjust uh, the rebound setting and also um, how to reset the adjuster, which is what they want you to do in the end of this. Now, I actually had a ride uh, lined up for the Saturday. The shock wasn't meant to arrive till the Monday. I was a little bit devoured, and then it arrived early on the Friday. And I was stoked, so I was up all, all night, you know, Friday night installing the shock. A um, little bit tired, sort of did my best, adjusted it how it said to adjust it. Now, when I took it for a ride on the Saturday, I was impressed but slightly disappointed because it felt a little bit bouncy uh, in the rear, a little bit pogo y, uh, and I really wasn't expecting it to be like that. And it's because I stuffed this up. Now, this setting here, when it says to reset the adjuster, it says turn the adjuster clockwise to fully closed position, so zero actually makes these nice little clicks when you turn the adjuster. Uh, then turn counterclockwise to open. Uh, so obviously once you get to zero, turn it counterclockwise 12 clicks, and this is the factory setting. Now the compression adjuster, which is one up here, um, I turned it all the way clockwise, like it says to do, um, and it was 12 clicks out when I did it. I turned it 12 clicks and I hit the stopper. So I just turned it back 12 clicks. So it was set to the factory setting from factory. When I did the rebound adjuster, uh, I counted the clicks as I went to zero, and it went 45 clicks, um, which I thought, geez, that is so far outside of the factory. That seems unusual. Um, but this is what it said to do in the instructions. It said turn clockwise to fully closed, and blah, blah, blah. So I did that uh, and turned it out 12 clicks, and it was just a bit bouncy. Uh, now, it's been a couple of weeks, or a week actually. Um, sort of thinking about it more, um, I realized my mistake. Now I'm going to go grab my factory shock because it'll make a bit more sense if I can explain it with that. I have my factory shock here. Let's pretend for a second this is the Olin's shock. If it was, the rebound adjuster would be this little clicker down here. Uh, I'd show you on the bike, but it's a bit hard to see. So little click adjuster, they want you to adjust it clockwise. Now from your perspective, when you're sitting next to the bike, clockwise is that way. So I adjusted it. I went 45 clicks, and then I went 12 clicks back out anti-clockwise as per the instructions. What the instructions don't tell you is what perspective are you adjusting it clockwise from. Are you adjusting it clockwise from the perspective of sitting next to the bike over top of the adjuster, or are you adjusting it clockwise from the perspective of underneath the bike? <laughs> Unfortunately, the way that I adjusted it was the way that I thought would be the most logical way to do it, which is clockwise as your, from your perspective of next to the bike over top of it, and this was wrong. The perspective they want you to adjust it from is from under the bike. Now, the difference this makes is if you're adjusting it clockwise from under, you're going this way, right? If you're adjusting it from clockwise on top, it's the opposite direction. So when I've adjusted it, from my perspective, which was on top of the shock, adjusting it, I've actually loosened the rebound adjustment off almost to the absolute maximum, and that's why it was bouncy. It was so soft. Uh, it was almost on the softest setting. It was 12 clicks out from the softest setting, 
when in reality it should have been about 40 clicks the other way. So, um, and in the Olin's manual, it tells you, you know, plus or minus five clicks from the factory setting is sort of where you should stay within. So I was miles and miles outside of the factory setting because I had adjusted it the opposite way of what you're supposed to. On the compression adjuster, you'll see it has a H with an arrow and an S with an arrow. So H being, you know, clockwise direction with the arrow, that makes it harder. And the S with the arrow makes it softer going anti-clockwise. Now the compression, uh, the rebound adjuster, sorry, it doesn't have this. I looked all the way under it. It doesn't really have a clear way of, um, you know, determining which way you're supposed to do it, like from which perspective. Now, if that's still, you know, not completely making it home, so lay down next to the bike, underneath it, right? That's the adjuster there, right? If you want to make sure you're getting it the right way, lay next to the bike from this perspective and turn it clockwise from this way that's how you get it to a stiffer setting right all the way up till it stops clicking and then back out 12 clicks if you lay down and look at the shock like this it's impossible to get it wrong it's clockwise anti-clockwise so clear i hope that makes sense because it perplexed me a little bit um i was a little bit disappointed you know for the 1600 you know australian dollars that i spent on this shock um, i was really expecting something pretty spectacular and although it was like a hundred percent better um, than than uh, the factory shop. With it adjusted properly, it's like it's a hundred percent better again. Uh, which you know, it's like now it's how it was meant to be. It's like this is what I was expecting from from you know the start. Um, so like even looking back, I can't even really think. Oh, geez, that was a stupid mistake because it really wasn't. Um, you know, when you're sitting next to the bike, looking down at the adjuster, seems like the natural perspective. And if you turn it clockwise from that perspective it's actually the opposite of what it's supposed to be. So I wish that Olin's were a little bit more uh, particular with how they explain it in the instructions. All I had to say was stand or, you know, lay under the bike and, you know, from looking at the bottom of the shock up, adjust it clockwise. If they'd said that, it would be totally unambiguous. It'd be impossible to make a mistake. Um, so if I was going to say, you know, is this shock good? That's the only mistake they have made. The rest of it is perfect. What a great kit. If you're considering it, man, it is such a big difference. The instructions, other than that one thing, the instructions are fantastic. The stickers that come with the kit are really great. Um, you know, I've got to stick it all up. Um, and I'm really happy with the kit. Just that one silly thing they could have just paid a little bit more attention to, um, you know, and, and it would have been great. Look, maybe I'm stupid. Maybe that's the issue. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm not. I'm pretty sure it was just a very easy mistake to make, which is why I thought I'd make the video, because surely if I made this mistake, being a pretty detail-oriented person, um, someone else out there would have made the mistake too. So if there's one person out there that that's, that's you, you made the same mistake and you adjust it and you go, oh my God, this is how it's meant to be, I thought it's worth making the video for, because um, you know, for the money you spend on these shocks, you really want to get the maximum benefit. Um, and uh, so hopefully there's one person out there that this helps. Now, as I mentioned, this is the HO429 rear kit. Um, I have also bought the FSK123 front fork upgrade kit, um, which has uh, uh, two replacement springs. Um, so one for a, a, a lighter rider and one for a heavier rider. Um, I'm over 80 kilos, so I'm going to put the heavier one in. Also comes with a couple of nice top caps, um, which have a little bleed, like a little air uh, bleed uh, valve screw on the top. Um, obviously shocks, they, they um, suck air in as they operate over time, so it's nice to be able to bleed that air out. I've bought the kit. I'm having it installed on Friday by a, um, a bike suspension tech. Um, I'm going to get him to revalve um, the shock absorbing side of the, uh, the forks as well. Obviously one side's the spring uh, on modern bikes and one side is the actual shock absorber. So I'm getting him to refluid, revalve and replace the seals uh, as well. So I basically do a full rebuild and upgrade with the Olin's front fork kit getting that done this Friday. So once I've done that, I'll probably do another video um, and sort of, because I haven't really found any really great videos on YouTube of um, sort of what difference it makes when you do the front forks as well, specifically on the CRF250L. Um, so I'll do a little bit of a uh, breakdown and sort of give my opinion of what I think. But um, look, if the, if the difference in the front is anything like the difference that the rear made, I'm really looking forward to it. It should be, um, it should be pretty next level.